Guzzo to join us today to tell us more on this and other things. Rich is a part of the faculty for Critical Mass Community. He is giving a series of presentations, powerful presentations, and so I brought him into the show to talk a little bit with our audience here about the kind of content that he's sharing inside the uh, Critical Mass CEO peer groups. So welcome back to Critical Mass Radio Show. Rick, thank you so much. It really is an honor to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you and uh, talk to your listeners again. Yeah, it's great to have you here. You should actually do a radio show. You have such a great voice. I'm sure Paul will try to sell you on a show before you leave. Um, can we start by asking you about your professional path to today? Maybe people haven't heard one of the other interviews you've done. So. Sure. So I uh, started out as a corporate athlete. And that means that my beginning of my business career was in the corporate world. Okay. And like an athlete in the sports world, at some point, your career comes to an end. Yes. And then you move on to what's next. Okay. So after 30 years with FedEx, a Fortune 50 company, uh -huh. I moved out on my own and started a consulting company that helps companies build high-performance sales teams. I take it you were in the sales function for part of the time at FedEx. I, pretty much the whole time, The whole Rick. time? Yeah. I was uh, in sales and sales leadership. Um, 17 years of the sales leadership, I was VP of sales at FedEx here in uh, Southern California for the Western U.S. So yeah. uh, um, if you can speak about it, was that a high-pressure thing? What, 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 I mean... Uh, yes. Um, you guys it, were growing. I mean, it was like, I mean, the heyday, right? I mean, things were just... I mean, it was an incredible experience. Okay. I started when I was 20 years old and I exited at 52 and uh, moved around the country, had a lot of different roles, a lot of responsibilities. And uh, yes, I mean, there's definitely a, a level of high pressure that goes with it. But uh, what a great company, great culture, and um, just a wonderful experience. I uh, let's see. I was in sales for quite a while too, mm -hmm. in sales leadership, and you know, doing that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't think people who haven't been in sales for a consistent period of time can understand the pressure of carrying a number. Well, what when, we call quota. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think for a frontline selling professional, you know, you, you definitely need to be wired uh, to sell, right? right? And what does that look like? And that is um, competitive ego-driven, money-motivated, resilient, because you're going to get a lot of no's. A lot of no's. Uh, you've got to be disciplined in your time and where you spend it. Right. Uh, and you've got to have the right uh, attitude and business acumen. I mean, somebody that a, a prospective customer wants to sit across from and do business with. Right. So if you don't have that sales DNA, uh, it's really hard to be successful in that role. And as you said, uh, it's not easy. I wanted to um, move from being a salesperson to a sales manager mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. Sure. One is ego, and I thought I could do a good job of it. Part of the, I have to admit this, part of it was I believed that by getting a team under me, uh, I was less at risk to miss my number and more likely to achieve my number. Right. Well, what I learned very quickly is it's actually the opposite. Because invariably, and the more you go, you know, you're vice president of a region, the further you go, the more you have to cover the risk of some of the people who aren't performing, and it can be more challenging, which is no different than a business owner who's running a $12 million company. You know, you want to grow the top line. Well, if you have, I don't know, a handful of salespeople, you kind of need them all to overachieve really to have a chance to perform, right? Absolutely. I mean, you recognize quickly if you're going to last in a leadership role for any length of time that it's not about you, it's about the team. Right. And your role is really to help them achieve their full potential. And that's where, you know, coaching and development comes in. And, and you know, first you've got to hire the right folks, but then you have to make that investment to, to really elevate them and, and help them perform at, at uh, their highest level. Yeah. So now you've been working with business owners says mm -hmm. here in the open small and mid-sized companies Correct. sales velocity advisors can help right um i i, my, I work with that market segment as well that's mm -hmm. how we know each other that's why you're part of my faculty um i find that many of them didn't come into the business through sales i don't know if that's been your experience but, i would agree with you and, uh, and that presents a particular challenge, I would think. It does. I, I think, you know, forget about sales for a second. We all tend to focus on um, what we bring to a company, whether we own it or if we're a key member of the executive team, is our background and our experience. That's where our expertise derives from. Right. And so if your background is not sales, then, you know, you're, you can't, you know, you really don't understand the dynamic of sourcing talent, coaching and developing a team. Uh, what what is needed 
the right. right type of person, the right type of coaching, the right type of foundation right. for for a sales rep or a sales leader to be very successful. So, you know, that's the whole purpose of a, a service provider like myself, right? It's to help bring that expertise, that experience to a small business owner, to a CEO, and come alongside of them and help build that foundation and, and, and really get them on the right track in terms of growth and prosperity. So we're going to talk about the content that you're delivering in, in mm -hmm. a minute. But before we get there, I just kind of want to talk around it a little bit because sure. uh, our audience is made up of these very type of people. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's valuable for them to hear this conversation. Um, do you find that, uh, hopefully you find, that the people that hire you are willing to learn how to manage a sales organization? Do, do you see part of your function as kind of being the Sherpa to the CEO? There is a level of coaching that takes place. Uh, it, it really depends on the situation. If you step into uh, you know, a client uh, engagement and there's an existing sales leader, then part of the engagement is me coming alongside of that leader and helping coach them up so they can be a more effective leader with the team, right? And, and helping them, helping them uh, recognize what effective sales leadership looks like. Uh, so that's that's one side of it. The other side of it is if if it's an opportunity where there's not an existing sales leader and the owner, the CEO is the is that sales leader, right. then yes, I mean, there's coaching that I have to do, coaching that owner, that CEO, uh, of what needs to happen once I depart. Uh, be, because any progress that we've made, yes. you know, if you don't reinforce it, right. if you don't have that cadence right. from a coaching standpoint, then it's going to be lost. And listen, this is no different than, you know, having a personal trainer at the gym, having a swing coach if you're a golfing or playing tennis, you know, that ability to practice and having that coach and that reinforcement, if you lose that relationship, if that ends and there's no more coaching, there's no more feedback loop then it's just not going to stick. So, Rich, has uh, it been your experience that on occasion, mm -hmm. sometimes, once in a while, the sales manager that's leading the team is less than excited that you've walked through the door? Yes, I have encountered that. And, you know, and I try to, in the very beginning, um, level set and manage expectations and right. say, look, I'm, I'm just here to help. And once I sit down and have a conversation and I'm speaking their language because I mean I grew up in sales. I you know led thousands of people over the years at FedEx and and the companies that I've served. I get it. I mean I speak that language. That's it's in my blood. So yeah, right. we absolutely can relate and connect very quickly. Like right. you know somebody who's got the same, you know, but follows the same football team, went to the same school, has the same hobbies. You've got a common language right. and shared experiences that you can talk to. So, you know, the barriers come down pretty quick and they recognize I'm there to help, not replace them. And and that's where the that's really where the, the real work that's the where the magic happens when yeah. they realize that you kind of maybe have the owner's ear a little bit more maybe than they do and you can actually right. help them maybe overcome some obstacles in the owner's mind that maybe even preventing them from being more successful. I, I wouldn't doubt that that happens on occasion as well. It does, whether there's a sales leader there or not. I mean, the sales reps have the same trust factor in the beginning, right? You're new. Who are you? What are you Why doing, are man? you here? You don't know our industry. Things were fine. Right. Exactly. And yeah, I mean, you just have to gain that trust and confidence. And that comes from time. You've got to make that investment personally and professionally to get to know the company, the people, and where are the pain points? You know, where can you help? And then get to work. Right. And and the part of what you've been sharing in our community, and he mm -hmm. is part of our faculty, he's given presentations in the yes. past, and here we are in July, and he, he's presenting in July and August to all the CEO peer groups. Um, uh, what is the main idea of this talk? Because each time you've presented, you've kind of taken a little different... People think sales is just like this thing, and it's really not. It's very complex, you know, and a lot of times in companies, they think sales and marketing is like one thing, and really, bigger companies realize they're two very different animals. Right. But we're not going to talk about marketing today. That's Ponzi's job. He's got yes. a great show on here, OC Talk Radio. Listen to that thing on Tuesdays at 1230. Uh, but for right now, we're talking with Rich Cacuso on Critical Mass Radio Show. What, what's the main idea of the talk that you're giving to the community right now? Uh, this is a how-to. And in my case, how to build a high performance sales team. And, you know, what I'm very curious at, you know, just by design, right? And I like to learn how to do things. And, and I think business owners and, and CEOs are very similar. It's, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? 
And that's the biggest question that I get, Rick, uh, is how do I build a high-performance sales team? What do I do? Because they don't know. And, and there is a roadmap. And that's really what we get into is identifying what that roadmap is. What are the key areas that they need to focus on uh, to get to that level of building a high-performance team that's going to deliver the, the results that they're looking for? Uh, so, yeah, that's the, that's the talk. So is that um, methodology a Rich Cacuzzo experience-based? Is it something else? How do you come at that piece of it? Right. Um, I think for me it's a um, big part of this is, is my background and experience and the things that I've done over the years. Uh, as you know, I'm also affiliated with a bigger brand, Sales Acceleration. Uh, sales Acceleration is the leading provider of outsourced or fractional uh, sales VPs in the United States. Uh, there's about 100 of us nationally. Wow. All of us are ex Fortune 500 sales VPs. And uh, we work with small and mid sized businesses to and bring our experience and expertise to them uh -huh. and help them deal uh, with these challenges. And, and I will just say this uh, the things that I focus on with my clients and, and my peers as well at Sales Acceleration. It's the fundamentals. You know, this is nothing. When you hear Fortune 500, it's like, wow, I'm not a Fortune 500 company. You know, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not FedEx. Right. All I those get sophisticated it. tools. Exactly. But, you know, you have a sales team or you aspire to build a sales team. Maybe you're not there yet, right? Could right. be a solopreneur that's looking to scale at some point. Yes, let's hope. Right. And so, you know, the how-to and the focus on the fundamentals, it's the basics. And if you think about it from a sales point of view, it really is the basics that will – get you to where you want to be the question is well what are the basics right how do you get there right right and that's really what you know what i'm doing as part of this presentation uh -huh. how do you do it and and we start off by and i know you want me to get into too much detail you don't want to ruin the surprise for the participants that's true we don't and want a spoiler alert if you're we, a member of the critical mass community you haven't heard rich yet tune out for her. we want them in the room so they can really yeah you know, you don't enjoy it. it but you know i do level set where it's like look small businesses Mid-sized businesses, these are the things they struggle with, right? Top 10 things they struggle with when it relates to sales. And then the question becomes, okay, so what do you do about it? Right. If you know, you know what the issues are. Yeah. So how do you- If I knew I, what to do about it, I wouldn't have the issues anymore, Rich. Right. Stop telling me what I know. And the other thing about this, Rick, this is a little bit different than other presentations I've given within the community. We actually have a sales assessment- Yes. That we allow your attendees to take prior to attending- um, their critical mass uh, session. Which reminds me, I have a couple guests coming in uh, in the August meetings. I need to get you their email so they can take the assessment. That would be wonderful. Thank you. So what's, yourself. what's great about that is it really makes um, the workshop presentation much more relevant because you've already done a self-assessment of your company. Right. And, you, and I give you the results of your assessment. You know what your roadmap is. Right. Everybody's roadmap's different. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm not talking theoretical. I'm talking, you know, when you're when we're talking, we're doing the deep dive and we're getting into the roadmaps, you're looking at your results. You know where your gaps are. You know what you're doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what what the path forward is. The it, question is, are you going to take What the are you going to do about it? Right. Right. Well, it was interesting because when you gave one of the groups that you gave the talk to in July here right. this month um, was our what we call emerging leaders, key executives, and uh, two of them are leading the sales departments within mm -hmm. their company. So yeah. it was interesting to see how they handled answering the assessments and how their scores related. Yeah, it's, um, you know, as I said, I believe to that group, you know, it's no different than going to a doctor for your physical, right? You go every year, every other year, depending on how old you are. And, you know, you know, go before you go in, you know, at least in my case, right? Three things you're going to hear, uh, lose weight, change your diet, exercise more, right? You know, you, you're going to hear that before you go in. Right. And then you get your debrief with your doctor and he tells you what your numbers are for cholesterol and blood pressure and all that stuff. And then the question becomes, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? You know the things you need to address, but are you going to address them? Right. And so this really is a call to action for the participants. You know, it, do the assessment beforehand. I'm going to give you the results the day that you come in for the critical mass session. And we're going to talk through that path forward what are you going to do? Now that you have knowledge, knowledge right. is power. Right. Are you going to act on it? Right. The pain of not changing has to be greater than the pain of changing. Exactly. Because the inertia of just staying status quo, 
I can live with it. I've lived with it this long. So the, so the, the enlightened business owner, CEO, president, whatever, mm -hmm. who hires you has got to realize there could be a better future for their company. Right. Hopefully they're successful now, but they realize there's something that isn't, they're not as successful as they can be, right? Right. I mean, wishing and hoping is not a strategy. No. Right. So, you know, you need, there's. But it's cost free. It is cost free. There's no, fun, there's no consultant you have to pay to wish and hope. And you make a great point. Um, honestly, in, in the clients that engage me, they're at a point where the pain and the frustration is so high that they're ready. Right. They're ready to bring someone in from the outside who's got the experience and the expertise that can come alongside of them and help them guide them out of the forest you know, into the opening, right? right? Into that land of prosperity right? and continued growth. Because the secret to a healthy organization, especially these small and mid-sized companies, is some amount of top-line growth. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be. And I, I'm doing this summer series, and I had two guests on earlier today who whose companies are growing solid double digits and have done that for the last three to five years. And, and they're rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. and, and that's fun because I, I want to explore that. But you know, even to grow two, three, four, five percent, because in a smaller company, that growth can lead to perceptions of opportunities for your employees, which is a major reason why employees leave the small and middle market because mm -hmm. they feel capped out. Right. You know, I'm, I can't get up. There's no next level. And uh, I've been doing this job and I'm going to do this job for the rest of my life. And I'd rather try something else. Well, Rick, spoiler alert. We're not going to get into the detail here, but those both those things you just talked about, yes, we will cover as part of this high performance, how to build a high performance sales right. team. <clears throat> and Absolutely. so, and so, it's not just working with the people and remediating them to mm -hmm. the degree that maybe there's some things they could do better, or whatever latest trends and practices which you're right. exposed to. I mean, uh, it and and it's educating and training whoever's leading the organization of mm -hmm. sales. Maybe it's the CEO. Maybe it's a sales manager, but it's, it sounds like it's instilling the discipline of the tools that allow it to continue after you're no longer getting a monthly check for helping them. Correct. Well, it needs to be scalable and sustainable. I mean, that's, that's my goal going in. And, uh, and that's what I'm delivering to my clients on the way out, right? I mean, you know, what's the point of bringing me in if it's just a momentary blip? I mean, you're looking for sustained We had a great year. Kakusa was in here and then yeah. everything went back. to the, yeah. you know, On the inflection yeah. point, right? And then it went down from <laughs> yeah, there. Call me. I'll come back. Uh, but no, I mean, that that is so true. And, and you're right. I mean, there's so many challenges that are out there. You could be, you know, yes, you're growing like a weed. Okay. You lose that number one customer. Right. Then what happens? Right. Or you lose that top sales rep. Then what happens? And that's the thing, you know, it, what happens with a lot of businesses, you know this, they go in hyper growth mode. So, you know, growth hides a lot of sins. Yes. And all of a sudden the growth stops. Right. For a variety of reasons. Well, you read my mind because that's, yeah. you know, uh, the, in an area, an era of high demand, and now we're in that now, we're mm -hmm. in a recovery mode, a lot of demand. Um, sloppy sales practices can be covered up because there's opportunity. When it tightens up and there isn't as much demand, then every deal becomes a little bit more valuable and important. And that's when the salespeople who aren't practicing good discipline really get exposed, in my experience. Put it in Southern California terms, when you're running through a multi-year drought, you're not worried about fixing your roof because you're not going to have a leak. Right. And all of a sudden, it's an El Nino year. Oh, well. Right. Because guess what? All the roofers are busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's words of wisdom from Rich Cacuso, a member of the Critical Mass faculty. He's given a number of talks this year. He seems to be uh, maybe by popular demand, but he uh, sales and revenue growth has always one of the top three items when I give the survey each year for my members on what you'd like to get more exposure to. It's just, they almost can't get enough ideas. And um, there's a lot of great tools that are out there today with technology, right, that helps them. Not only your assessment, but other online SaaS-based tools for CRM and things that we don't have time to get into, but I know that you do talk about in your talk. Absolutely. And would be delighted to come back on in the future and talk about some of those things. Look at that sales guy. He's always going for the trial close. I love that. All right. So if someone would like to learn more about you, how do they find you online? So two ways. You can email me at rich at salesvelocityadvisors.com. And that is also the website, www.salesvelocityadvisors.com. Either that, way, you can get me. That's your brand. That's my brand. That's your brand here in Southern California. Yes, it is. And your, and your internet, I mean, your national partner is? Sales Acceleration. And how do you spell that? Wow, this is like, look at you. Well, that is spelled X C 
E L E R A T I O N. Sales acceleration. Right. So that's his big brother back end, like I have Renaissance Executive Forms as my international business partner. Yes. I think it's great to have advisors who aren't only talented, skilled in their domain, but they also have a network of a hundred, you said, other people right. that you can call on. So that's got to be a great resource for you. It is. You know, being part of a bigger team, Rick, um, whether it's sales acceleration or Renaissance Executive Group makes a difference. That's yeah. right. Well, thank you for being a friend and a member of the community and giving of your time again this afternoon to share a little bit about what you know, Rich Cacuso. Thank you very much, Rick. Always a pleasure. It is. And I'd like to thank Paul Roberts, who's our engineer for today's show, and our three producers, without whom I could not do four interviews that we've done today here on octalkradio.net and all the podcasts and video casts that are going out. Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and our newest producer, Nicole Terry. If you'd like to contact me, connect with me, let's do it on LinkedIn. I am Richard Franzi, spelled simply F-R-A-N-Z-I. And until the next show, I hope all of your business decisions moves your company in a positive direction. You have been listening.